six packs in a big bag of ice. To it took six packs in a big bag of ice. Hey, it's Bobby from BrewHardware.com, and I'm just going to demonstrate the process of silver soldering some fittings into this vessel here. We have a 31-gallon uh, pot that's being turned into a mash tun here, and we're going to be putting a 1-inch MPT welding spud into the bottom for a bottom drain, and also a half-inch MPT welding spud for a dial thermometer or a compression fitting like this in the side. The items we're going to be using specifically are the Harris Stay Clean Liquid Flux and Harris's Stay Bright number 8. This is a, a one pound roll and it's an eighth inch uh, diameter solder. I like the 16th but this is something I got for uh, cheap on eBay. Um, we're also using an inch and a five eighths uh, radio punch for the larger spud and then I might use a step bit or a radio punch for the half inch variety. The hole needed for this is a little over an inch, um, just under inch and an eighth, so I might go out to an inch and an eighth on this one. Alright, of course we're also going to be using a map gas torch. You can use propane if you needed to. Uh, just going to take a little bit longer to heat up. So let's get started. Now obviously the first step is to determine where exactly you want to make your, uh, your hole and put the spud in. Uh, and then once you do that, you need to clean up the stainless area. It might look like it's clean, but it's not soldering clean. You want it to be just spotless. You could use some sandpaper. Uh, if you have a stainless steel wheel, don't be fooled by brass wheels or wheels that look like it might be stainless steel. You have to know that this is stainless because if it's common steel, it's going to rust wherever you... Uh, you ever, wherever you make contact because the, uh, the plain steel is going to embed into the stainless. So this is a stainless wheel. So you want it to be extremely clean. You can use a sanding block or some sandpaper. You, know, you just get do it in some random directions to clean it up and also scuff it up a little bit for better uh, solder contact. Now let's see where we want this to sit. I don't want to go too close to the edge because it starts rounding over there. But I'm just going to pick a, a spot like that. And if you want, you can mark the center. Alright, a little bit of uh, lubricant. I'm just using some WD-40 here, nothing special, but you want to have something in that. Just a little WD-40 in there, glue it off. Now when we say high pressure, low speed, um, I'm putting all of my weight down on this drill. And uh, I've got the drill on its lowest speed and the highest torque setting. And you want to make sure that that bit doesn't get too hot. You can keep spraying it down with some uh, WD-40 to keep it. Keep that work edge in check, a little bit on the bit. So you can see that the WD-40 is smoking a little bit.
Now it's usually easy, easier to put the um, the punch side on the inside of the pot so that you can operate the uh, the, the stud bolt here. So you put this uh, supporting die on this side here. So now you can see that that's the only thing you'll see. Once the uh, the teeth on the punch side digs into the back side of this pot, it's going to uh, hold itself in place. So all you have to do is tighten this. All right, so you put a big one inch socket on there. Start cranking it down. So it makes a really beautiful clean hole. A little bit more stuffing. And since I did spray some WD-40 which has oil in it, a little more acetone. Just get all that oil off of there. Now, who knows who's been handling this or if it was cleaned from uh, the machining that was done at the factory. I'm taking the spud. On the back where the flange is, I want to clean any residue off of that. It looks really nice and shiny, but you never know if there's any oils on it. Next thing I like to do is to create a ring of solder that's perfectly fitted to this, um, this bushing here. I just hold it when you have a big bottle of flux it's uh, helpful to use a little um, pipette and just apply some around here a little on the flange Now you're going to have to apply more flux as you go and also apply more solder so it's helpful to have this extended and ready to go. Wipe it off. Any, any debris or grease that's on there is going to end up in your solder eventually. And make sure that your pipette for your um, flux is also full. Now we're using map gas it's a really basic propane torch tip here I just happen to have it on to some map gas which is hotter than propane And so, flip this over into the hole. Now, the pot is a huge heat sink as it is. You're going to want to start applying some general heat all around just to start warming it up. You don't want to start heating your fitting up the first thing because you're going to burn off your flux before anything really starts happening. So you want to get the area around where you're going to solder as warm as you can get it before you start concentrating. Now I stepped away for a second because I realized I had forgotten my safety glasses. Another precaution is that as this flux gets really hot to the point where the solder is going to flow, 
it's really emitting some horrible gases. It's nothing to be playing around with, so make sure that you have a door open and a fan blowing to vent the fumes out. Try not to breathe them in directly. Now, even with the hotter map gas, it, it does take a while to get the temperatures up. And as you go, you can work closer and closer to the area that you're going to solder. Okay, and after a good minute or two on the pot, you can start directing the flame right to the spud. Now you can see it drops down on, on its under its own weight. Now's a good time to add more flux. Alright, I soldered this about a minute ago and I let the, uh, the area cool down a little bit. But then with a wet paper towel, you can start letting that steam clean the uh, burnt off flux. Now if you start doing this too early, it's you might move the fitting. The solder could actually still be fluid. Um, but you do want to wipe it off with a wet rag or paper towel while it's still hot enough to sort of flash steam the water. Because then it does a pretty nice job of cleaning up all that burnt flux. And uh, it really doesn't leave the area too discolored. Um, that's a, a really nice joint there. I'm totally happy with this. There are no gaps in the solder. In fact, it looks, as far as how it looks when it's completed without any cleanup, it looks um, easily as good as a TIG welded job would. No, it's not beautiful, it is sticking up a little bit. Uh, if you want to make that super clean, especially for a bottom drain, you can use uh, your angle grinder and try to smooth that out as uh, close to the flush with the bottom as possible so you don't get a little uh, liquid saved in there. But uh, I think it looks pretty good. There's not a whole lot of extra solder in there, just enough to uh, stop there from being any uh, crevices or anything. And uh, this will work fine as a bottom drain.